Kind of hop noppy. Welcome back to Genealogy 101 with the Autonomous Party, and I am your host, Opie Miha. So, on the last uh, episode, we went over the lamb patent information. Um, we will get back to that um, in the later series or later videos, but today I wanted to jump back to the Free African Americans website. Um, as you can see on the screen, it, it uh, states that we're going to be going over the freeborn residents of Petersburg from the Library of Virginia microfilm reel number 47. Okay, so that's your source. And then it's the Register of Free Negroes and Mulattoes, 1794 to 1819. So I'm going to show you how I got here. Uh, when you go to freeafricanamericans.com. If you go into the state of Virginia and scroll down to the Petersburg Registry of, or Register of Free Negroes, 1794 to 1819, you also have one for 1819 to 1833. So I picked this particular um, registry for a reason. So you'll see why here in just a moment, why I picked this particular um, registry, okay? So let's go through it um, again. I'm going to try to keep this to about 20 to 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm not holding you here all day. So on April 7th, 1794, uh, number five is Israel Condre or De Condre, a light mulatto man, 30 years old, five feet and a half. Uh, high stout maid and he was born on the island of St. Domingo at Port-au-Prince came into the state of Virginia from Bristol in England as a free man a free man in the year 1783 renewed uh, June 13th 1810 and July 23rd 1822 so again like I said I wanted to go through this for a reason because we're starting to see where people are from Okay, so we're going to keep on going through this and we'll, you know, we're going to get more of these. So June 30th, 1794, number six, we got Gabriel Brandon, a dark mulatto man, about 27 years old, uh, five and a half feet high, born in the county of Prince George of a free woman and raised in the town of Petersburg. Next one is August 16th, 1794. Number seven, we got Charles Watts. So I hope you guys are paying attention to the names because this is, you know, also part of genealogy. A light mulatto man, 45 years old, five feet, seven inches high, born free in the county of Prince George. Next person, number eight, Morris Evans, a light mulatto man, about five feet, eight inches high, 40 years old, born free served an apprenticeship with Colonel William Call in Prince George County. Our next person is going to be Jesse Scott, a light mulatto man, five feet, six and a half inches high, who served as a soldier and a freeman during the American Revolution, about 34 years old. All right, so our next person is going to be William Scott, a light mulatto man, five, six inches high, about 41 years old, who served in the American army during the revolution. Okay, so we got two people here so far that we're showing goes back to the American Revolutionary War. All right, let's move on. So we're gonna go to Charles Coleman. All right, he's number 11, Charles Coleman, a dark mulatto man, Near five feet eight inches high, about 25 years old, was born in the possession of John Hardyman of Dinwiddie County, from whom he obtained his freedom by judgment of the general court, being the descendant of an Indian. All right, so now we're running into something new here. So in Petersburg, Charles Coleman is determined to be free because he is the descendant of an Indian. So again, pay attention here to, to what this information is saying. 
and served as an apprentice with Robert Armstead in the town of Petersburg. So depending on how much time, this might end up being a, you know, multi-part series just on this particular section. Uh, so we'll keep on moving here and see where, how far we can get. David Thomas, a dark mulatto man near 5 feet 11 inches high, 28 years old, born and raised in Prince George and Dinwiddie counties. So we're even starting to see our people who are just, you know, just born here. You know, they're just born in, in Virginia. Next, we got Plato Brandon, a dark brown mulatto man, 5 feet 6 inches high, 28 years old, and raised in the town of Petersburg and born free. And pay attention to the wording that they're using here. They're saying dark brown mulatto. All right. Next is Nancy Kemp, Jasper, a small light colored mulatto woman, about five feet and a half inches high, about 29 years old, born free in Charles City and raised in the county of Prince George. All right, so now we're to August 18, 1794. So I hope you guys are paying attention to the years because um, that matters as well. Next is John Cypress, a brown mulatto man, five feet, six inches high, 23 years old, born free in the county of Surrey. All right, next person. Parthena Cornett, a yellow mulatto woman, five feet, six and a half inches high, 27 years old, born in the county of Northampton, uh, North uh, Carolina, born free. All right. Next person is Thomas and Chavis, a dark brown, well-made well mulatto woman, five feet, two inches high, about 29 years old, born free, born of a free woman in the city of Williamsburg. All right, let's move on to our next one. Thomas Barber, a light, a light brown mulatto man, five feet, five and a half inches high and thin made about 46 years old, freeborn. Rebecca Harris, a light brown mulatto woman, five feet one inches high, about 34 years old, born free in Chesterfield County. Next, Betty Morris, a light brown mulatto woman, five feet five inches high, about 40 years old, born free in Chesterfield County. Next person, so we got Mary Alden, a light brown stout mulatto woman, five feet two inches high, about 53 years old, freeborn and raised in Chesterfield County. So we're starting to see a lot of people showing up as being free. So as you guys can see, if you look over here, we haven't even got, you know, through even half of this yet. All right, so we got Elizabeth Dutchfield, a light brown mulatto woman, uh, five feet, two inches high, about 27 years old, born free in Yorktown, we recorded June 13th, 1810 with her three children. Moving on, we got Edward Brandon, a dark brown mulatto man, five feet, one inches high, 45 years old, born free in the county of Dinwiddie. Our next person, Frank Stewart, a dark mulatto man, five feet, eight and a half inches high, 23 years old, born free and raised in the town of Brantford, Prince George County. All right, next we got Betty Coleman. So we saw the other Coleman up top. So now we got Betty Coleman, a dark brown woman, five feet, six and a half inches high, 27 years old, liberated by a judgment in general court from John Hardaway of Dinwiddie County being a descendant of an Indian woman. All right, so let's move on to Tempe Coleman, a dark brown, well-made woman, five feet, two inches high, 26 years old, liberated by a judgment of the general court of John Hardaway of Dinwiddie County as being a descendant of an Indian. All right, renewed September 25th, 1799, October 14th, 1800, and September 20th, 1803. All right, let's keep it moving. Next, we got William Tom Thompson, a light brown mulatto man, five feet, three and a half inches high, 
24 years old, born free in Charles City County. All right, let's move on to Amy Joyner, a dark brown mulatto woman, five feet two inches high, about 36 years old, born free in Chesterfield County. So again, I'm gonna say this again. I hope you guys are paying attention to the names. All right, this is Petersburg, Virginia. All right, let's go on to Polly Joyner, a stout, a stout well-made dark brown mulatto woman, five feet four inches high, 25 years old, born free in Chesterfield County. All right, got another Coleman here, so let's go. Nancy Coleman, a dark brown well-made mulatto woman, five feet one and a half inches high, 27 years old, freed by judgment of the general court of John Hardaway of Dinwiddie County, being a descendant of an Indian. All right, so again, this information is telling us a whole lot here. All right, so I hope you guys are paying attention again. I know I keep saying that. William Smith, a light mulatto man, five feet seven inches high, 25 years old, born free and raised in Charles City County. Next, we got Judith Brandon, a dark mulatto woman, four feet 11 and a half inches high, 26 years old, born free and raised in the town of Petersburg. All right. Next, we got Patty Lawrence, a dark brown woman with long black hair, five feet high, about 40 years old, born free and raised in Dinwiddie County. All right, next we got John Smith, a dark brown mulatto man, six feet, six feet one inches high, about 26 years old, born free and raised in the town of Petersburg. Next, we got Matt Morris, a black man, five feet five and a half inches high, about 46 years old, born free and raised in the county of Chesterfield. All right, Charles Andrews. A light yellow mulatto man, five feet, five and a half inches high, 23 years old, born free and raised in the county of Chesterfield. All right. And I want you guys to, you know, keep an understanding of the word mulatto. Um, go back, you know, into the time frames and see what this what this meant in the 17, you know, 16, 1700s. All right. Moving on, we got William Vaughn, a dark brown mulatto man, five feet, eight inches high, 41 years old, born free and raised in the town of Petersburg. All right, next we got Jenny Brand, a stout made light brown mulatto woman, five feet, six and a half inches high, 28 years old, born free in the county of Prince George. All right, next we got uh, Francis Brandon, a dark brown mulatto woman, uh, five feet two inches high, 23, born free in the county of Prince George. All right, so next we're moving to the date of August 19, 1794. All right, so we got Burwell F Flood, a brown mulatto man, five feet seven and a half inches high, 38 years old, born free and raised in Mecklenburg County. All right, let's keep it moving. Next is Jenny Floyd. A brown mulatto woman, slender maid, five feet four inches high, 24 years old, born free and raised in Mecklenburg County. All right, next we got William Brandon, a brown mulatto man, five feet six and a half inches high, 25 years old, born free in Dinwiddie County. All right, next is Aldrich Matthews, a brown mulatto man, five feet six inches high, 23 years old, born free and raised in Dinwiddie County. All right, next we have Sylvia Brandon, a black mulatto woman. Five feet, one inches high, 30, 38 years old, born free in the county of Prince George. Next we got Sealer Norton, a dark brown mulatto woman, five feet, eight inches high. 26 years old, born free and raised in Chesterfield County. All right. Next, we got Lucy Corn, a dark brown, stout made mulatto woman with bushy black hair, five feet, one inches high, 36 years old, born free and raised in Chesterfield County. All right. So let's see. Our next person is going to be Mary Morris, a brown mulatto woman, 
5 feet 1 inches high, 48 years old, born free, and raised in Chesterfield County. All right, so here we go. We have another Coleman. Susanna Coleman, a dark brown woman, 5 feet five feet 3 and a half inches high, about 26 years old, stout maid, the daughter of Sarah Coleman, who obtained her freedom of Robert Hall by a suit in the general court. And the said Susanna has been allowed to pass as free by the said Robert Hall of Dinwiddie County, to whom she belonged by her mother's obtaining her freedom. All right. So again, important information we just read there. Next, we got Charles Brandon, a brown mulatto man, five feet eight, five feet high, 40 years old, born free in the county of Sussex. All right, next we got Tennessee Sneed, a light mulatto woman, five feet, six inches high, 17 years old, born free and raised in Accomack County. All right, our next person is gonna be Hannah Jasper. Hannah Jasper, a brown mulatto woman, five feet, five feet, five inches high, 30 years old, born free and raised in Chesterfield County. All right, next we got Ari Stewart, a dark brown mulatto woman, five feet high, 29 years old, born and raised in the county of Prince George. All right, so next we got Delcy Owen, a brown mulatto woman, five feet, one and a half inches high, 26 years old, born free and raised in the county of Prince George. All right, next we got Phoebe Corn, a brown mulatto woman, uh, five feet one and a half inches high, 26 years old, born free and raised in, the Chest in uh, Chesterfield County. All right, so now we've moved on to August 20th, 1794. We got Lucy Tony. A dark brown mulatto woman, five feet two and a half inches high, 36 years old, born free and raised in the county of Prince George. So again, pay attention to these dates. Okay, so this was supposed to be, you know, in the heart, in the time, in the area where slavery was supposed to be heavy. So keep that in mind. Susanna Tony, a dark brown mulatto woman, but she pitted with the smallpox, five feet one and a, and a half inches high, 32 years old, born free and raised in the county of Prince George. All right. Next, we got Nicholas Thompson, a dark brown man, five feet two and a half inches high, 47 years old, born free in Hampshire County. Next, we got John Britton, a dark brown mulatto man, much pock pitted, so smallpox, uh, five feet, six inches high, born free and raised in Chesterfield County. Next, we got James Ash, a dark brown mulatto man, five feet high, 33 years old, born free and raised in the Isle of Wight County. Next, we got Elizabeth Norton, a brown mulatto woman, five feet, one inches high, 60 years old and or upwards born free and raised in Chesterfield County near Petersburg. All right. Next we got Aggie Santi, a brown mulatto woman, four feet, 10 and a half and a half inches high, about 19 years old, born free and raised in Dinwiddie County. All right. Next we got Phoebe Harris, a brown mulatto woman, uh, five feet, two inches high, suppose 60 years old, born free in the county of Prince George. All right, again, pay attention to the names. Aggie Harris, a brown mulatto woman, five feet, two inches high, born, born free and raised in Prince George's County near Petersburg. Betty Harris, a brown mulatto woman, five feet, four inches high, 24 years old, born free and raised in Prince George County near Petersburg. All right, next we got John Anderson, a dark brown mulatto man, five feet, three inches high, uh, 37 years old, born free and brought up as a Turner in the city of Richmond. All right, that's interesting. All right, so now we moved on to August 23rd, 1794. Okay, again, pay attention to the dates.
All right, so we got Jonas Cornett, a brown mulatto man, five feet eight inches high, uh, 23 years old from a certificate of Lawrence Smith, appears to have been born and raised in Northampton County, North Carolina. All right, our next person is James Scott, a dark brown mulatto man, five feet uh, seven inches high, 56, born free and raised in James City. Next is Susanna Martin, a light mulatto woman, five feet two and a half inches high, 30 years old, born free and raised in Chesterfield County. All right, so now we're moving on to August 25th, 1794. So we got Gen C. Wynn, a brown mulatto, uh, excuse me, a brown mulatto woman, five feet seven inches high, 21 years old, born free and raised in the town of Petersburg. Next is Ruth Matthews, a dark brown mulatto woman, five feet two inches high, 20 years old, born free and raised by William Fleming in Chesterfield. Next we got Patsy Morris, a dark brown mulatto woman, five feet three and a half inches high, 18 years old, born free and raised in Chesterfield County. Next person is Sarah Kitson. A light brown mulatto woman born free and raised in the county of New Kent. All right, moving on, we got Thomas Flood. A dark brown mulatto man, five feet, eight inches high, uh, 37 years old, born free and raised in Amelia County. All right, next we got Joe Corn. A dark brown mulatto man, uh, five feet, six inches high, 30 uh, 30 years old, born free and raised in Chesterfield County. All right, so now we moved on to the date of August 30th, 1794. Again, I keep repeating this. Pay attention to the dates. All right, so we got Aaron Newsom, a dark brown man, five feet, 10 inches high, 22 years old, appears to have been born free and raised in Greensville County. Next, we moved on to September 1st, 1794. Okay. We got Priscilla Scott, a brown mulatto woman, five feet, two and a half inches high, 28 years old, born free and raised in the town of Petersburg. September 3rd, 1794. Anthony Roberts, a brown mulatto man, five feet, seven inches high, 41 or 42 years old, born free and raised in Spotsylvania County. All right, October 13th, 1794. Peter Lawrence, a dark brown mulatto man, five feet eight and a half inches high, 22 years old, born free and raised in the county of Prince George. All right, next we have Betty Banks, a dark brown mulatto woman, five feet one inches high, supposed about 50 years old, born free and raised in the county of Richmond. All right, next one is going to be Sally Banks, a light mulatto woman, uh, five feet, six inches high, daughter of Betty and born free. OK, so we're moving on to the date of December 22nd, 1794. All right, again, the dates. All right, so we got John Jones, a dark brown mulatto man, five feet, 10 inches high, stout made, 24, born free and raised in Halifax, Virginia. So that's John Jones. All right, so we've moved on to December 31st, 1794. We got Jane Allen, a light brown mulatto woman, five feet, three inches high, uh, 16 years old, daughter of John Allen, a free mulatto born free and raised in the neighborhood of, Peterber of Petersburg and by the request of her father registered. All right, so we moved on to February 9th, 1795. So as you can see, we're walking through time. All right, so that's why I keep saying pay attention to the dates for multiple reasons. Ned Matthews, a dark brown mulatto man, five feet, 10 inches high, about uh, 35 years old, born free and raised in Dinwiddie County. All right, May 5th, 1795, we got Robert Thomas, a brown mulatto man, six feet, one inches high, uh, 29 years old, born free and raised in the county of Prince George. So as you can see, we've gone through a hundred people. 
Okay, so he was number 100. We've gone through 100 people so far. And if you look over here on the side where my pointer is, again, we're not even halfway through this. So we got June 29, 1795. We got Harry Hunt, a brown mulatto man, five feet, eight inches high, 36 years old, born free in Chesterfield County and raised in the town of Petersburg. John Morris, a brown mulatto man with bushy black hair, five feet, seven inches high, 20 years old, born free in Chesterfield County and raised in the town of Petersburg. All right, next we got, so we're at August 25th, 1795 again, the date, the dates. Eliza Allen, daughter of John Allen, a free mulatto, a dark brown mulatto girl, four feet, 11 inches high, 18 years old and raised in the town of Petersburg. September 8th, 1795, Polly Smith, a likely brown mulatto woman, Five feet four inches high, 20 years old, certificates of freedom 1807 through 28, and raised in the town of Petersburg. All right, December 8th, 1795, Nancy Stewart, a light brown mulatto woman, five feet two inches high, 20 years old, born free and raised in Dinwiddie County. All right. So we've made it to January 26, 1796. All right, so we have Jesse Ash, a black Negro lad, five feet, six and a half inches high, short, knotty hair. And by the affidavit of Jonathan Curtis, the son of Nancy Ash, a free woman, and was born free in the county of Princess Anne and 19, year, 19 years old. December last. Okay, so since we made it to the year 1796, I want us to start paying attention to the labels, uh, how they're describing people, and let's see um, what what has changed and what hasn't. All right, so we're going to March 16, 1796. We got Shadwick Brandon, a stout, well-made, dark brown Milano man, five feet seven and a half inches high, short, woolly hair. 25 years old and raised in the town of Petersburg. All right. April 6, 1796, we got William Taylor, a free mulatto man, dark brown complexion, short black hair, five feet seven inches high, 45 years old, says he was born free in Boston. So in the comments after you watch this video, I want you guys to let me know Will you think this mulatto, dark brown, um, what all this means to you? All right, so May 17, 1796, we got Isaac Gilmore, a brown mulatto man, five feet, uh, five inches high, 43 years in Febby, last born, free and king in Queens County. All right, so we're to August 24, 1796. David Stewart, a black mulatto man, five feet, 10 inches high, large lips and bushy head of, a, of hair, 25, born free in the county of Prince George. All right, so we got, we're to August 25th, 1796. Evans Britton, a dark brown mulatto man, five feet seven inches or excuse me five feet five inches high short bushy hair 28 years old born free and raised by mr rollett in chesterfield county uh, november 15 1796 we got george tony a dark brown mulatto man five feet six and a half inches high with short knotty hair uh 25 years old son of peggy tony a free woman in a free woman and raised in the town of Petersburg. All right. So next we are to November 16, 1796. We got Stiff Lawrence, a dark brown mulatto man pitted with the smallpox, short knotty hair, stout and well-made, uh, five feet, nine inches high, 21 years old, born free 
instead of Patty Lawrence, a free mulatto woman and raised in the county of Prince George. All right, so we are to December 7th, 1796. We got Patterson Harris, a light brown mulatto man, five feet, 10 inches, 10 and a half inches high, uh, 22 years old, short bushy hair, his eyes rather dark, yellowish gray, uh, born free and raised in the county of Dinwiddie. All right, next we are to, and this will probably be our last person. So we got uh, Dick Stewart, a brown, a dark brown mulatto man, five feet, 11 inches high, short hair, 21 years old, the beginning of the present month, born free and brought up in the business of a blacksmith in the town of Petersburg. Let me see if I can get one more in. John Morris, a dark brown mulatto man, five feet, seven inches high, black bushy hair and black eyes. Uh, 24 years old, born free and raised in the county of Chesterfield. And this is July 11th, 1797. So we made it to 1797. All right, so as you can see, uh, we're gonna stop there for now, but as you can see, we've made it through 121 people. Um, we're in the year of 1797. And again, like I was telling you guys before, um, if you look over here off to the side where my pointer is, um, again, we still haven't even made it halfway. All right, so let's go back up to the top for just a second before we close out. So again, this is the freeborn residence of Petersburg from the Library of Virginia Microfilm Real number 47. So I'm giving you your, your source where you can go look this up. And again, this is a register of free Negroes and mulattoes, 1794 to 1819. Okay, we started at the year April 7th, 1794, right? We saw that there's a mulatto man from St. Domingo, or, or as we would call it in today's time frame, Haiti. Now we also saw in this registry of free Negroes and mulattoes, people who are Indians. We saw a lot of mulattoes. Um, I think as to the part that we just got to, I think maybe one person was labeled a Negro. So, you know, again, dates, um, dates and times are important in this. Um, the way they're labeling people is important in this. Um, so I just want you guys to really key in and pay attention to the dates, the names, the descriptions of people, because all this is important in genealogy, history, and all the things that we talk about as far as being um, indigenous to this land. So again, um, I'm Opie Miha. I appreciate all y'all for coming out and uh, checking out this episode of Genealogy 101. And again, I will see you in the next episode. Take care. Peace.